Well, now I'd like to turn to uh, somebody that hasn't been with us for a little while that we've all missed. That I've gotten emails saying, whatever happened to him, Andy Kenny's back for Andy's Op Corner. So Andy, welcome back. And glad you could join us this evening. Well, thank you, Jim. Uh, yeah, I miss being here, but things have been kind of hectic at home. Um, we're turning the corner, and uh, we're hoping actually on the railroad to start operations after about two years. So we're working on that. I will uh, share screen. There we go. Okay. Let me minimize this here. There we go. Okay, uh, tonight what I thought I would talk about was, is uh, what, what I do and what people with op sessions uh, do as far as uh, between sessions, getting the trains and staging uh, prepped for the next session. Now, I enjoy this. Uh, I, I like working on the railroad, just resetting it because uh, I have so much control over it with the car card system. And um, it's, it's been enjoyable uh, for me. I just come down with a cup of coffee and start uh, working on the uh, railroad and listen to music and have my two four-legged buddies with me. So tonight I'll walk you through this. Uh, hopefully I can do this in 15 minutes, but let me uh, get going here. So uh, real quick, uh, the railroad, uh, the model portion of the railroad is this square box. I guess I should ask, everybody can see this okay? Yep. Yes. Oh, okay, thanks. All right, so the model portion is this square box here. Now, the, the actual railroad, my, my uh, railroad, not a real one, uh, is, uh, it comes from both the Chicago and Detroit main lines down to Indianapolis. From Indianapolis, it goes to Louisville, down to Nashville, down to Birmingham, Alabama, and New Orleans. And, and the reason I'm pointing this out is uh, we're working at both ends of the railroad and a couple other spots. So Bowling Green is at the north end. It's right where we enter uh, just before we enter the actual model portion or what will be the model portion of the railroad. Columbia is the other end, the south end to Columbia, Tennessee. Uh, Rock Island uh, and Nashville Road, you'll find in Columbia, and the B&O and Nashville Road, you'll find in uh, Bowling Green. And going back to Rock Island, the actual Rock Island went as far as Memphis, so I extended that on its own track to Columbia, and then from Columbia into Nashville to go to Ribo Yard. Uh, the Rock Island uh, runs that on the Nashville Road. The B&O uh, takes the uh, Nashville Road track from Louisville down through Bowling Green to Nashville, and it meets the, B the Rock Island at um, Ribo Yard. Ribo is a playoff of Rock Island and B&O, so it's an interchange yard for the two. Nashville Road comes from the Great Lakes all the way down to the Gulf. And all three of them, uh, mainline trains uh, stop at Nashville and do their work at these yards. Most of them tie up right there or they, they terminate or they start from uh, Nashville. A couple other spots, the l and I'll point that out, and the Tennessee Central. Then down here, the NC and St. Louis. Okay, the Bowling Green, Kentucky, uh, there's actually uh, 10 tracks, uh, as you see here. And on the other side, you can barely see some tracks. There's 12 tracks in this side. Up to uh, a short time ago, this was used for storage. So we didn't use that side. Now we're starting to uh, get it ready um, as we get into passenger service. So the Bowling Green, you see quite a few B&O. And you see uh, Nashville Road, the l and and the Milwaukee Road uh, actually co-owned the Nashville Road. They bought it out of um, uh, bankruptcy. And so you'll see uh, Nashville Road, l and and Milwaukee equipment on the Nashville Road. Uh, feel free to stop me as, we, as I go through this too. It might be easier to answer questions uh, than to wait till the end. At the other end of the railroads, Columbia, you see Rock Island. And uh, this end of the railroad from Nashville to Birmingham, 
uh, is the last bastion of steam on the Nashville Road. It won't be with us much longer, but in 56, it was still here. And um, we run all steam uh, south of Nashville to Birmingham. And you can see some trains are double headed. So we put two crews on them. Okay, uh, Guthrie staging uh, for the LN and, and the Tennessee Central. Uh, this is a double track main for the Nashville Road right here. It goes to single track. And right at this point, the LN comes, uh, you can see a train along the back here. There's actually two tracks. And one train goes to Gresham Yard as an interchange or a transfer. And the other one goes to Ribo Yard as a transfer and they run daily. So when they leave, they come out onto the Nashville Road track and uh, head to the main yards. When they come back, they come back, go through that loop around the back and then come and stop right here. And Tennessee Central, it's a stub end uh, back through the wall and uh, we'll pull the train out, just reverse everything, or I should say, put the engine at the other end and uh, shove them back in. So he's a, um, just a local, comes out to switch a couple of towns and goes back. Then Franklin Junction, NC St. Louis is right here. And there's two tracks behind this, uh, this hill here. That's a view block. And so they came out, they come out of here and one goes to Gresham Yard and one goes to uh, Rebel Yard each day uh, transfers. Uh, Gresham Yard is, is Nashville Road Main Yard. That's uh, just about all the uh, trains will stop at this yard, except for the B&O Rock Island. And this is Ribo Yard for the B&O Rock Island. So now after each operating session, trains that are in staging that will run in the next session, and, and that's important, only whether they're going to run in the next session uh, must be reset. It takes about three uh, six hour sessions to run a 24 hour clock, um, a ra the railroad 24 hour clock. So um, I don't want to reset everything. I just want to reset the trains that are going to run in the next session. And this is how I handle that. I think you've seen this board, at least some of you have seen this before. It's three, three panels and we'll be working with this panel today. One of the things I want to point out here is uh, you don't see the, um, Right over on the left is where I keep all the train IDs and uh, call times. They've all been pulled from this, but you'll see them in the next uh, shot. And um, this gives a list of all of the uh, engineers or the crew and the times that, that took um, on duty, off duty. And I like to take a picture of each of these at the end uh, so I can keep track of uh, the trains. I can tell if I need to add more time less time, change the start time and such. So this is, uh, now you gotta realize this is two years ago. We haven't turned a wheel in two years uh, as of next month. So um, what I'm looking for here are trains that are in staging that I have to make sure have been reset and are ready to go. So I'm looking for Bowling Green and down here second from the bottom is Bowling Green. Columbia, COL, is right there. There's another Bowling Green. Uh, Gut is for uh, Guthrie, and that's the l &M transfer. And here's Franklin, and that's the NC transfer. So that's what I'm looking for here. So there'll be several or more trains um, that I'll have to address. I've got, uh, right now, uh, or what we had been doing, is um, the old timers op session on Monday, middle of the month. We called it old timers just because uh, the young guys were working. Uh, and then on Saturday, the last Saturday of the month normally uh, is everybody. And that allows those at work to, to come and operate. We we'd run six hours on Saturday and five hours on the Monday. Uh, we'd start a little later on the Monday. So anyways, um, what I needed to do was just uh, get these trains ready between sessions, which gives me about two weeks. Okay, this is a form that I created and I found it was easier to work with. So I'll mark down the trains in Bowling Green that have to be reset, trains at Columbia, and then the others, the LNN, NC St. Louis, Tennessee Central. 
And down here, I'll discuss this some other day. That's another portion of it. Okay, so now we go to Columbia. And uh, we want to look at the, the card boxes for all the tracks. The cards facing away from us are trains that have arrived but have not been reset. The ones facing us have been reset and are ready to go. Now for the, the one we're going to be working with the train is RI-984. We've actually, this train has actually been run, reset, ready to go, but that was done like two years ago. So we're going to look at this and I'm just going to point out some of the things that I do as I reset the trains. All right, so here's the, um, the train packet cover. Uh, it's train Rock Island 984. Uh, called at Columbia, Columbia to Rival Yard, no interim stops, and there's no blocking. So they can be blocked any way you want, or they can be consisted any way you want within the train. Uh, the engines on this train are uh, F7s. No number on the B unit, but these are the A units. And here it is sitting on track five. So what I'll do on this is pull this train out. I'll either take the engines off and just move it by hand or if I turn the power on and, and run the uh, engines. And what I'll do is I'll pull it out then I'll back it down the uh, fascia track, the track right along the fascia. I find it the easiest way to work with it. Now, the next thing I do, I'll take all the car cards, and I'll lean them up against the cars all the way around. This gives me a, it's for a couple of reasons. One, it, it works for me. It's close and easy to read. But the thing is, I can um, be sure that the cards are correct for each car and that uh, there's no missing cars, uh, cards. So it, it helps me get a good start on, on making sure the train is what it's supposed to be. And then what I'll do is I'll go through these cards and I'll work the waybills. Some waybills, as, as I'll point out, you can just rotate. Um, uh, most of them, however, um, will be one-sided coming from um, industries or customers somewhere on the model portion of the railroad. So when they arrive here, they're pulled. And then uh, I, can, I can put new waybills in the cars or I can remove the car and store it. Uh, there's different things I can do. So just going over some of the waybills, showing you some of the things that, uh, that uh, I look for. Okay, this, this one here, the waybill's been pulled, the car, um, it's, it's uh, uh, through west or traffic west. And um, that means it's going off the railroad um, into staging and simulates going somewhere else in the country. Uh, to the west. And Rock Island is the only one that goes west. Uh, all the cars going west go through Rock Island, right, uh, Rival Yard. Uh, so this car here, uh, I either have to get another way bill for it or remove the car. So that's, that's uh, one way of handling uh, an empty car that's, that's uh, when empty goes the same direction, the opposite direction that the train's going. Okay, the next one is continuing in transit. Um, I have quite a few cars that go from LCL Freight House to LCL Freight House. And you can see from Memphis to Nashville. And I've got them coming from all different cities from the north, south, east, and west. And um, they come in on all three railroads. Actually, more than that, they also come in on uh, at the LNN NC St. Louis through the uh, transfers. So we end up getting uh, up to 28 cars going to the LCL Freight House. Um, those cars are set in the morning by nine o'clock. Uh, the whole yard's blue flagged. Then after four o'clock in the afternoon, uh, they'll be brought back uh, and uh, they'll be sent on their way. So this is a, um, a two-sided way bill. And it's basically, uh, we call it CIT or continuing transit. This way bill gets it to the Nashville Freight House. When it's ready to leave, we flip these waybills, all of them, and they will show just the opposite. They will show uh, routing to um, back to whatever freight house they came from. Now they only show up every month and a half or so. So you don't, you don't recognize the same cars. And I can also change them out, put them in different cars if I want. Okay, the empty return, when the waybill's gone, 
And this is at the south end of the railroad, and this is through north. So it's going to Connellsville, of the Western Maryland in Pennsylvania. Uh, so this this will just be shipped through um, the Rebel Yard to the B&O and then from the B&O on to uh, Connellsville. OV traffic, overhead traffic uh, is um, anything that comes from a staging yard and goes to a staging yard. So it's coming from someone further uh, away and going somewhere further away than the model portion. So this one is coming from uh, Fort Smith, Arkansas. Its routing is Rock Island to the LNN. So it's on the Rock Island right now. You can see station L2, which is uh, Guthrie staging, the um, LNN staging. So this will be brought to Ribo Yard and at Ribo Yard, this will be placed on the LNN transfer when it comes in and taken to um, back to the LNN staging, Guthrie. And then from there, I can uh, pull the waybill, rotate it, and it can go back the other way, whatever, uh, whatever I want to do with it. So these are all uh, two-sided two waybills with opposite directions uh, from each other. Okay, uh, another overhead traffic. Uh, let's see, this one. Now, something I want to point out, although it's, it's not a big deal, this is a great northern car. So in reality, in a real railroad, more than likely they would not be using a great northern car uh, out in Santa Fe, New Mexico to ship it to the east, kind of the east coast. Uh, it would probably be something more appropriate uh, going back eastbound. But this one uh, comes from Santa Fe, New Mexico. It's a Santa Fe to the Rock Island, to the B&O, on to Wheeling, West Virginia. So it's now, it's already been, uh, passed on to the Rock Island from the Rock Island that they'll pass that on at Rybo Yard. Then the B&O will take it up through Bowling Green. Overhead traffic needs waybills turned. So this is, over, this is a waybill um, uh, through west. On the other side of that would be the B&O end uh, through north. And uh, that rate waybill can just be rotated back and forth if, if I want to do that, or I can uh, pull the waybill and pull the car. So it's just, uh, these waybills are used mainly to get us enough traffic in a train. So after all the assigned waybills have been processed for this train, cars can be added or removed as needed to fill out the train. This can be done by adding or removing cars with OB uh, overhead uh, waybills. So uh, say I've got a train and I have um, traffic on it uh, being delivered uh, to the um, model portion of the railroad uh, and there's 15 cars, but I want my train to be 25 cars. So all I do is I find another 10 cars that I want that, that will work for me. They can be anything because of the waybills are, are uh, pretty generic. And I'll put the waybills into those cars, um, uh, showing them going across the railroad uh, from one, one staging yard to the other staging yard. And when they get to that other yard, if I have more waybills than I need um, or more cars than I need for the waybills, it might be heavy on waybills, I can pluck those extra cars off. It's, you have a lot of control over your train and uh, what you've got on your train. I hope that makes sense. So uh, storage drawers, I started buying these and um, got a little hard to find during uh, COVID, but uh, I kept buying them. And um, these have come in really handy for storing uh, freight cars and just equipment in general. Um, the, uh, I got them both, both sides here. But uh, the cars, when I take them off the railroad, they can be laid in here. The weight bills just, or the car cards are left with them, of course. And when you need cards, you just pull a drawer, a drawer open, grab the car you want, and grab the weight bill, and then put it on the, on the track. Okay, it's also good for storing equipment. These are some of the diesels. Those and the ones above are diesels that are going to be uh, repainted and, and uh, re reworked um, for the 1969 version of the Nashville Road. As you can see, it's gonna be heavy on Alco power, which I really like. Uh, steam, you can see how dirty they got sitting around on the layout. I later put them in these drawers, but it'll keep them a lot, a lot cleaner uh, 
And then passenger cars. I've got a lot of passenger cars. And I hope to get them going also. Now we're getting passenger trains running. So train Rock Island 984 is all ready to go in this pack. It's ready to shove back into uh, track number five. And it's ready to depart. And on to the next train. And that's it, Jim. Well, that's fantastic. I'm so happy that you're able to uh, start operating again after two years. Well, thank you. My crew is too, I'll tell you. They, they're kind of pushing me. So I, I'm hoping February, it was going to be the end of January, but uh, we're looking at sometime in February now. You know, I'm really looking forward to the uh, the show where you're going to be the featured modeler to uh, to show us one of your uh, real operating sessions. I think that's going to be fascinating. It's one thing to hear you talk about it and see the cars and everything, but I think that's really going to be fascinating. So I appreciate so much you doing that for us. Well, thank you. Yeah, I told my crew and uh, we're going to, once we get the trains running, we're going to um, work on it, just doing a video of it. I've, I've got to do a, pre, a, a test video to see if I can do it live or if it'd be best to, to video, you know, make a video program and hopefully right. uh, play that. But we're going to work with that. Thanks so much, Andy. I appreciate it. Well, thank you, Jim.